Oh, guys, we've got a big one on here. He's coming up to the surface. Ooh! Walking him back. Woo! <laughs> yeah! Dude! What's up, guys? I'm super excited about today. Today is another beautiful day here in East Tennessee. Today I'm here on the beautiful Watauga Lake, and behind me is my buddy Chuck Crisp. And uh, Chuck is gonna take us out today and show us how to downrig for lake trout and anything else that may bite. So guys, I hope you enjoy this one. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna learn a lot. Without further ado, wish us luck. Here we go. So you guys already know that we're gonna do some down rigging, but let's go ahead and ask just the basic question, and that is, what kind of fish could we possibly catch today while down rigging? So let's ask the pro. <laughs> um, hopefully, Michael, we will catch lake trout. Um, we will probably catch some rainbow trout more than likely. Okay. Um, could be a brown trout. We hope to maybe target a few walleye. Oh, now um, see, that yeah. would be a special treat for me. We'll yeah. see if it happens. And you never know, a small mouth or two might pop up. We just never know what we're gonna get. It's a mixed bag sometimes. Well guys, I'm excited. This is something that I have been pursuing for almost a decade. Me and my buddy Sam have been trying so hard to see if we can catch lake trout. Guys, I've caught one by mistake, so today is gonna to be the first day where it's purposeful, and I'm really excited about that. Okay, so these are electronic downriggers. These are electronic downriggers, so they do have an electronic switch for up and down. Okay, so we've got a switch right yeah. here. So guys, how a downrigger works is you have a cannonball on the end that gets your, your line really, really deep in the water so you can go find those fish that are down deep. Um, how much weight is that ball? That is an eight pound cannonball. An eight pounder, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And I have 150 feet of stainless steel cable so we can go wow. 150 feet if we have to. 150 feet. <laughs> <laughs> have you, now, I mean, have you ever actually gone that deep? Yeah, okay, usually okay. I've maxed out about 100. Okay, I've personally been doing a lot of research on this, but like when it comes to lake trout, do you want to kind of be right above them? Is that the goal? Because they're going to strike from it below. It's like most okay. fish are going to be looking up. If you see them on the depth finder, they're 70 feet. If you try to run about, I try to run about between 50 and 60. Okay. Uh, and, and if you have enough flash on it, the water's clear enough, they're going to see it. They're going to chase it. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is just my kind of mix box. Okay. So, what I did this weekend is I kind of prepared ahead of time some yeah. different spoons and things that I had planned on fishing. Yes. But we have plenty more to choose from, and this is what we're going to start out with. Okay. Now, what would you give me some advice here? We're, obviously, we're going to be trolling these. So, mm -hmm. What's kind of the go-to for Watauga Lake? Uh, in years past, a, a simulated, say, rainbow trout. Okay. Um, Thunderstick. Oh, okay. Thundersticks. Also, yeah. uh, the black and gold have been really good in the past. Yeah. Spoons have been really good. And I do have one spoon. Okay. This is a discontinued spoon. Ooh. It is a Lure Jensen Loco spoon. They do not make these anymore, but I was able to procure a pretty good selection of them years ago and i have yes. held on to them ever since oh so. man so what are we going to start with today oh uh, we're going to throw or we're going to actually pull some different spoons we're going to okay. pull loco spoons we're going to pull thunder sticks we've also got cleo spoons Ooh, so we're running multiples today oh we're running six we're going to run six rods what? we're going to run no two way. down riggers we're going to run two snap weight rods okay we're going to run also two what uh it's called dipsy divers so yes we're, i've we're heard of putting those out soon and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more if we put them out so six rods at one time <laughs> yeah. guys this is about to be epic <laughs> yeah i okay. usually run it out maybe at 20 25 yards and then i'll drop it down okay so guys, when it comes to down rigging, the first thing you want to do is you want to let out line, very similar to when I go striper fishing and I want to put on that planer board. You're going to let out your initial line. You said about 30 yards? Yeah, 20, 20, to 20 to 30 yards of line before he's going to connect it to that down rigger ball, okay? Now, when you've got that little snap on there, that releases when the fish bites, correct? That's correct, and you just slide the line in. It's got just enough tension on it to hold it while you're pulling it, and then yeah. when the fish hits it, it'll come it'll loose. It'll pop loose, okay, very good. So guys, um, the bowling ball or the weight will stay down deep. Once that fish hits, it detaches, and then the fight is on. Then it's just you, the reel, and the fish. Now, what can we expect when the fish hits? Will the rod itself pop? Sometimes it'll pop, or you'll see it begin to start bouncing. It'll start bouncing, yeah. okay. But it'll just look very erratic. 
schematic for what it is right now. Okay, so guys, we officially have the downrigger set up. Now we're gonna be moving on to some of the side setups that, that include snap weights. So let's talk to Chuck real quick and figure out what that means. Yeah, this is a snap weight system, uh, Michael, and I do have a, a cowbell set on here for flashing. Okay. Um, so I Ooh. use what's called the uh, 5100 or do a 5150 where I put out 50 feet of line and then I'm gonna hook a snap weight to it okay. to help drive it down deeper. Uh, and then I will put out another 100 feet. So there's your 5100. Sometimes I like to go to a 5150 and okay. I'll add extra weights so we can even get them deeper. Ah, uh, okay. And so you're adding the snap weight on to get this one deep because it's not a core line or right. anything like that. Like I'll let or... it out 50 feet and then we'll add the snap weight. Okay. And guys, check it out. He's got a line counter so that he can actually know exactly where he's at. Very nice. Now that's convenient. That's one that I have not uh, looked into as a snap weight. That's very cool. Yeah, this this is a good system, especially yeah. for folks that don't have downriggers. Yeah. So it allows anybody really to troll. All right, guys. So, so far we've done downriggers, we've done the snap weights, and now we're going to talk about a dipsy diver. So without further ado, Chuck, what is a dipsy diver and how do we use it? Dipsy diver is actually an, an underwater board I guess you could say that is designed it's weighted there's a weight in here to pull the lure down mm -hmm. the good thing about a dipsy diver is it is adjustable you can actually adjust this to go out left or right so this helps take it away from the boat and away from your other lines yeah so I have these adjusted to a left and a right so that they will go out each side and then they will be going down to the desired depth now that's really cool Okay, so yet a third way that you can get your baits or your lures down deep. Very cool. So guys, I've often um, read on different articles and asked different people, what kind of speed should you go when you're um, down rigging or if you're trying to troll, uh, specifically for lake trout, trout in general. So what, Chuck, what's your thoughts on that? What, how fast should we be going in general? I, I vary, Michael. It could be anywhere from 1.5 miles an hour to 2.2. Yeah. So, factors that are involved with that or you know what kind of presentation the fish looking for that day are yeah. they the more subtle bite you know is it more finesse and slow the other thing is is what you're pulling yeah. is it large spoons small spoons is it you know big lip crankbait so all that plays into a factor of how fast you're going to troll all right guys we got a fish on oh yeah wow Oh, he feels heavy. Yeah, and it took the dipsy dive, still not full Right. Oh. Yep, I saw I saw a fin. <laughs> now do you want me to fight him straight into the boat? Okay. Woo! Oh. Oh keep going. Okay. Oh there he is, there he is. Oh my gosh. Oh that dipsy diver twisted and it let off a little. Yeah. And I thought for a second he'd come loose. We got a second one on right here. Are you serious? Yeah, go ahead. Oh my gosh, you guys, we just doubled up. No way. What is happening? We must have gone right through a school of them. Oh yeah, look at it pulling. All right, you just tell me where to go. Oh. Oh. Wait. Oh, we broke off. Oh shoot, okay, well, let's get this one in. All right guys, the first one just broke off, but we've got another one on. Oh. Right, keep going, keep going. They just came loose from the- family. Okay. All right, I'll move this side. Yep. Okay guys, we've got the second one on. It's coming in pretty quick. Okay, I just felt a head shake. Yeah. All right guys, we've gotten one. There he is, I just saw him. It's a nice fish. Really nice fish. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's off. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, oh, devastation. No. Oh, no. oh, guys. <laughs> I was just trying to give a little bit more of a pull towards you and he popped oh, loose. So guys, we just, um, a couple fish just got loose. We just hooked up. So whenever that happens, go ahead, just like striper fishing or anything else, when you have schooled up fish, go back and hit it again. So we're actually gonna get these things re-rigged up go right back to where we just were and see if maybe we've got some more that want to play. So guys, we just went over a school of shad and some big fish feeding on the shad. They're up high, but it'll be interesting to see if one of these goes off. All 
All right, you guys, so this time I've learned my lesson. We're doing slow and steady. Nothing jerky, nothing crazy. Let's see if we can get this guy up. I'm not, you know what? It's, uh, I'm not feeling him. Oh, oh, this, this one. Yep. Okay. Okay, yeah, no, that, I feel this one. Wow. Oh, wow, this one's strong. Oh, my goodness. I felt it pop loose. I think that was the weight that just came loose. Yeah, you're still on. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm reeling in nice and slow. This is super exciting. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, it's a pretty good trout. That's a really good trout. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh. Guys, we had a trout on there. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a second. Currently, I'm, I'm working up this other guy and guys, he feels big. Feels really, really big. Oh wow. Yeah. He's head shaking like crazy. Maybe a I hope so. That would be really cool. Honestly, any fish is exciting to me, but guys, this is such a fun way to fish. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he, he may be in that other line. So, oh, he's big though. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm gonna keep him coming. Yes! <laughs> Guys, it's a lake trout. Oh my gosh. Yep, I got him. Wow. Oh my goodness. What a chunk. We went through that school of shad and just like, like fish on, fish on, fish on. Wow. Guys, look at this lake trout. Absolutely beautiful. We're gonna be bringing this guy home. So guys, um, I just landed that lake trout and then uh, truth be told on that first one that I was reeling in, I was reeling, I was feeling pressure and then suddenly pop no no pressure at all so let's talk about what happened there because i actually thought okay it's come loose something's broke off i gave the rod to chuck as i'm fighting the lake trout chuck goes you still got a fish on so let's talk about what just happened there because that was kind of wild you know i'm learning a lot on this uh the trolling side of things um why did the tension let up and what should i've done differently what? with the rainbow they, yeah. they're fighters they will jump, they will swim more towards the boat. They're gonna to try to get away from you. So he was coming towards you and I guess you felt it going slack. And so they, you thought the fish was off. <laughs> so guys, I thought the fish was off. Chuck ended up luckily landing the thing. He was able to just lift it really quick. And then we still landed the, the lake trout as well. So now we've got a rainbow and a lake trout that we can take home for dinner. So pretty crazy stuff. Mike, the wind has changed directions. It's now coming out of the Southwest. And that's one of the best directions I've found to catch fish. My buddy Alan always says, uh, wind out of the south, blow the hook in the fish's mouth. Uh -huh. Wind out of the west is the best. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. There we go. Guys, we've got the right wind direction. Let's see what we can do here. All right, guys, so I've been asking questions throughout the day because right now I'm learning a lot about um, just fishing deep. And so one of the questions that I have is, um, what's the flexibility that you might need for your rods things like that so um let's quickly ask chuck and see what he says mike when uh, trolling it is good to have like a medium fast rod because you do want some flexibility you want that tip to be able to give because with trolling and you get a bite that give is going to help the fish set itself onto the hook so if the rod is too stiff there's always that chance that the fish can pull out so medium fast rod, uh, flexibility. I mainly use seven foot, seven, six foot rods. Um, sometimes even up to an eight or nine foot rod. Okay. Oh, he's jumping, he's jumping. Oh, big trout guys. Oh my gosh. We've got it on the spinning rod. We've got a big rainbow, you guys. He's so big, I'm nervous. I've got him up high, just kind of surfing. All right, I'm gonna walk back. Woo! <laughs> look at that rainbow! Yeah! Wow, guys, look at the size of that big lake rainbow. So guys, check out that big old chunky rainbow right there. Oh my goodness. Guys, that was incredible. So we got a fish on. About the time I said fish on, Chuck pointed out and said, he's jumping, he's jumping. I look up and the rainbow's just flying all over the place. These trout on Watauga Lake, they are just intense. So another good one in the boat. That was a lot of fun. Let's see what else we can do. 
I don't think it busted loose. Oh. All right, guys. We got another fish. And it's it feels big. All right, it's popped loose now. And he's he's up there. I'm bringing him in as quick as I can now because he's on the surface. There he comes. There he comes. We got a little guy here. Oh. Shoot. Whoa. Holy smokes. Oh! I think that's what's gonna happen to us. Yeah. See how easy. Yeah, he was a little, he was a little guy, but guys, that was a really fun fight. That was a, uh, a rainbow trout. All right, here we go, guys, on on the land court. Here we go, guys. So we just lost the one, literally getting ready to re rig, and then the lead core went. So let's reel this one in. All right, guys, we're on. I feel some weight here. It's way out there because it's on that core, <laughs> the lead core. Woo, he's fighting. I wonder what we have here. He has not come up and jumped yet. Oh man, he is just way out there. Goodness. <laughs> 40 or 50 yards to go, people. Woo. Guys, I'm reeling in with the lead core line and we let out a lot. Yeah, almost 100 yards was out, and he's definitely on, but boy, is he fighting. Literally, my left hand is cramping right now. <laughs> Stay on, big boy. What are you? Chuck's got me on something big here. He's big. He's the biggest one I felt today. I'm just going to keep reeling. He is, he is heavy, though. There he is. He's spinning on surface. Okay, here he comes. I got him surfing. What is he? Oh. Slowly walk backwards. Woo! That's a small mouth. A small mouth? No way! <laughs> That's so cool! Oh Heck yeah! <laughs> Guys, we just caught a nice chunk of a small mouth. I cannot believe it. So that was pretty random. We just got a bass. Chuck. How many times has that happened to you? Is this, a, is this something that's happened recently? Is this something that happens a lot? Years ago, I used to catch a lot of smallmouth on the lake, uh, trolling. That's the first one I've caught in several years. There so you go. a good smallmouth. <laughs> so it's been a while even for Chuck, but there was a big old chunk of a smallmouth that said, I want to take you for a ride, and he did. He was fighting and digging. Literally, this hand was cramping. <laughs> so it just tells you it's an intense fight, and then we put it on, when you have to fight him on a lead core line, it's intense. Is he still on? Oh man, do you want it? Do you want him? Okay. Oh wow. Oh guys, we've got a big one on here. He's coming up to the surface. Oh, he's big. He's a really. Oh no. Oh, he's still on. He's still on. Oh gosh. Stay on, buddy. That's a big, big rainbow. I don't know if you guys saw how high he jumped, but that was insanity. Oh man. Woo, look at him fight. Look at him fighting. Oh my gosh. You guys, this is insanity. Oh, he's big. I'm gonna start walking him back. Woo! Yeah! Dude, that is a monster. Are you kidding me? Guys, check out this giant rainbow that just hit. Super aggressive. Jumping and fighting. Best fight of the day as far as the jumping is concerned. Oh, and we'll throw him in the cooler. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and Chuck's hooking me up. He's actually got, he brought ice this morning, so we've got everything down in there. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. Bonus fish. Here we go. Oh. Uh, there he comes. He's coming up. He's going to jump. Oh, oh, he sped it. No, he didn't. That's all right. That's the way to finish it, guys. So, guys, check it out. We're getting ready to leave. Kind of had some bonus action there at the end, and uh, we'll take it. You know, that was fun. All right, guys, today was an epic day. I'm super, super grateful to Chuck for taking me out in his boat. Really appreciate it. Um, 
Guys, if you enjoyed this one, you may also enjoy a time where I come out here on Watauga Lake with my buddy Squatch and we get a bunch of crappie under docks. Or if you're more interested in maybe seeing something really big like a striper, check out this one on Boone Lake. I think you'll enjoy it. Till next time, tight lines. Three.